So what Jonah did, he uh, took one of the dorms at Stanford and he started selling them these wristbands. I mean, he didn't sell them, the, his assistants did. And they, they started wearing them and he was measuring how many people were wearing them. A week later, he started selling them in the dorm next door. Now this dorm had a reputation as uh, the geek dorm. So all these were high achievers academically. What do you think happened to the number of people in the first dorm that were still wearing the wristband? Did it go up or down? Yeah. Down, absolutely. So there was a 32% drop in the number of students from the first dorm who were still wearing the, the uh, wristband. The lesson here is we imitate, but we also disimitate. And that's extremely important to understand and to keep in mind whenever you do marketing, we watch others and we want to be like others, but only certain others. What are the practical implications? They're very complicated. Uh, you can think about selective distribution, selective distribution of information or gradual distribution of information, but just keep that in mind as you go. There is a big question of, that I sometimes get, you know, people say, okay, if I have a great product, you know, why, why do I need really to stimulate word of mouth? I, I don't really need to stimulate it. If I have a great product, you know, people will talk about it. I, I disagree. I actually think that word of mouth always needs to be uh, stimulated, maybe except if you, if you really have a, a totally revolutionary product. But usually it needs to be stimulated, and there are really two reasons. One, a very interesting study that I found in doing the research for the new book. Remember, most word of mouth is positive, right? But the part that is negative, about a third of it, comes from people who actually never owned your product. It's kind of annoying if you think about it, right? There are people, people constantly say bad things about stuff they never experienced. I have a chapter actually in the book, in the new book, that is called, I haven't read this book, but <laughs> that... I found these people who write reviews on Amazon of books that they never read, which I think is, <laughs> well, don't get me started on this, but anyway, the, it's just a reality, okay? So you have people who don't experience your product, and yet they talk about, them, about the product, and the only way to counterbalance this constant trickle of negative word of mouth is to encourage your happy customers to talk about your product. The other reason is that people forget. People run out of opportunities to talk and they don't, you know, they leave your store and they're happy and you think that they talk about you for the rest of their lives. They, they don't. Over time, people forget. I'll give you an example. So this is a, another person I interviewed for the new book, Bruce Palmer. And Bruce is in charge of marketing for Knowles. Anyone here familiar with Knowles? It's the National Outdoor Leadership School. So they take students on semesters uh, in the wilderness, basically a semester in Alaska or a semester uh, somewhere in Patagonia. You know, very exciting things. And obviously when someone comes back from this experience, they talk about it like crazy. They tell all their friends. But what they've seen is that over the years, or over months, people forget and people stop talking. So there is a lot of buzz right when a student comes back and then there is less and less buzz. So what they decided to do, they introduced something called the Knowles bus. This is a bus, and it goes from campus to campus and actually reactivates conversations. And, and how do they do it? First of all, the bus itself is a special bus. It doesn't work on diesel. It actually runs on recycled vegetable oil that they get from restaurants. So they actually go to a Chinese restaurant and dig the, the oil and filter it and so that's something to talk about. And they actually involve the students, their alumni, in collecting the oil. And let me tell you, that's something to talk about. I was on this bus for two weeks. You'll see a scary picture now of me uh, selecting the oil. <laughs> it, it wasn't that bad, but we thought it would be fun. It actually doesn't taste 
Uh, not taste, it doesn't smell that bad. I don't know how it tastes. <laughs> but it's a whole process that it takes the students along and, along and going to this restaurant, filtering the oil, and then pouring it, and seeing that a bus can run on a recycled vegetable, and that's something to talk about. Now, outside, the outside wall is a climbing wall, and it's actually pretty hard. It, it looks pretty simple, but it's hard. It's, you have to kind of climb, or it's a bouldering wall. You go across. Inside the bus, there are pictures. It's a wall with pictures that people actually bring from the experience. Sometimes people bring to the bus and with little notes, or some of them sent it. And then you see a student or an alumni or an alum who comes and says, hey, yeah, I remember this. This was at base camp, and we had the best breakfast, and it starts stories. And I've seen people you know, bringing their friends to the bus, and that's the whole concept or part of the concept of word of mouth marketing, you reactivate your happy customers to talk about their experience. And that leads me to the next thing, which is give us something to talk about. It can be the bus, it can be something like this. I gave a talk in uh, Stockholm, Sweden, a few years ago, and they took me to this bar made out of ice. The bar is made out of ice, it's sponsored by Ice Hotel, where the whole hotel is made out of ice, and Absolute Vodka. So it has the walls are made out of ice, and there is a nice silhouette of Absolute Vodka. Uh, the counter, you can see, is made out of ice. They give you a glass made out of ice. Uh, you know, you wear this hood. It's something to talk about, and I've been telling a lot of people about that. Here's a business-to-business -business example. Anyone here is familiar with this 3M security glass? That's, so they... To promote 3M security glass, they put a bunch of money between two pieces of security glass and put it on the street. That's something that starts conversations, right? Yeah. Hey, you know, is it real money? No, hey, I'm going to break it with my car. Interesting thing, you know? Yesterday, I did a Google search on images on security glass. Guess what came up? The whole page, I mean, do it, do it when you get home. The whole page was this. So when somebody looks on images, security glass, they see this image and 3M gains from it. So buzz also relates to search and it can help. But the main idea is to give people something they can talk about. People here are familiar with this guy? Okay, let's, since not everyone is, and since I just love this commercial, let's quickly see it and then we'll talk about it. So the first question is usually, did it sell blenders? And I asked them this question, and they actually say that they had a 500% increase in sales of the home blenders. It also affected their business-to-business -business part uh, because they were really an industrial blender a company that migrated to B B2C, uh, but it affected their business significantly. Uh, now I have a question to you. Where did they get the idea to blend an iPhone? <laughs> 